Good day, folks, and welcome again to another Tommy Williams talk show. You got the Tommy Williams show right here, your host, Tommy Williams. And I want to welcome you to episode number six. We're moving right along here in this pandemic, keeping the vibes positive, everybody. So we have a big one for you again. I know I always say it because I always deliver. We have a big show for you again today, starting off with my first guest. He goes by the name of Joffrey. He's going to tell you some more about himself. And I say that because he's a very friendly individual. He's delivering a very important message from a very, um, very well-studied profession. He's a doctor. He's in the medical field. And I'm going to let him tell you a little bit more about himself. So my first guest, guest again is my friend, frat brother, Joffrey. Come on in, Joffrey. Hey, hello. I'm Dr. Joffrey Mount Varner. Uh, I'm a crisis and split-second decisions expert. I go around the country teaching experts are, t- are teaching executives and teams how to manage crisis and how to make split-second decisions. In addition, I'm on the front lines of COVID, working in the, in the ER, seeing COVID patients, admitting COVID patients, treating COVID patients, and discharging COVID yeah. patients. Yes. And we all hope for that discar- discharge rate to be, uh, to be up. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'll tell you, man, thank you so much for everything you're doing. I know it's a very tedious and, and very uh, well thought out uh, craft, and I applaud you for everything you do. Uh, you, are, you are severely in the front line of this pandemic and I'm grateful. Um, I just want to say, um, well, I know I want to stay away from, I, I've always said to, to um, the viewers that I want to stay away from the numbers, but, you know, it, it is the big monster in the room. And we do want to see what direction we're going in. In your perspective, from your perspective, uh, because you have big insight, what are the numbers doing? What do you see happening? Wow. Um, that, that, that is definitely a softball question. And uh, your audience, they don't know me yet, uh, but I'm not an alarmist, but I just want to be crystal clear. Yes. The numbers are moving in the wrong direction, and things are as critical as the media is showing that they are. Um, so this is, this is the time, if there's any time that you want to follow the CDC guidelines and, and then some, this is the time to do it. Yeah, yeah. So um, with, re- with regard to this, the strands, I, I, they talk about strand or is it the strains? The strands? The strand the, of the virus. Yeah, they like different strains. So in, in September of 2000, I mean, September of 2020, they discovered a new strain in, in the uh, UK. Um, the great thing is it, it does not cause increased mortality. It does not cause more severe symptoms. The okay. downside is it's more contagious. Uh, uh, so it, it takes less to, to infect people. But another upside is the feeling is, is that the vaccine will still work for it. Then what's happening? Uh, the, the new strains that are coming across, you said the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the new strain is here. The good thing is, is that the reports, the indications are that the, that the vaccine will be, uh, will I still work against this new strain? But I know you got some questions about the uh, vaccine, but but if you don't mind, just give me a few minutes to talk about, to, to, to uh, set up for the vaccine. Is that okay? Yes, sure, absolutely. All right, so there are five, I, and I need your audience to really sit up on, on this part, because this part is key, and I encourage everyone to, to become super users so they can go out and spread this. There are five main spots that are accountable for 80% of the transmissions, 80% of the transmissions. Restaurants, bars and cafes, hotels, places of worship, and gyms, with restaurants making up 40% of those transmissions. What's my point? Those are areas that we don't have to go to. We can decrease the transmission rate greatly. (laughs) Isn't that something? Yes. I get it. And then if you don't mind, just to take it a step further, well, people ask why. We can get into the nuances later, but look at it, look at it this way. It takes about one to 1,000 active uh, COVID particles for someone to get infected, meaning that, um, I mean, it's just, just one to 1,000 particles, that's it. But check this out. Someone who's infected with COVID, when they breathe, 
they breathe out anywhere from 100,000 to 10 million active particles. 100,000 to 10 million. But you only need one to 1,000 of those to get infected. So how do you decrease the likelihood of you getting infected? I know you already know this because you and I already talked about it. Mask and socially distancing. And the yeah. better the quality of the mask, the less likely one of those 100,000 to 10 million active uh, particles are going to get into your oral pharyngeal uh, 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 nasal pathway. You know, I can't help but ask the question because it seems so statistically proven when they uh, mandated the six feet separation. How did they come up with six feet with the, with the traveling of the particles? Um, is, is, with their study and they saw that it's after six feet, they, they tend to drop to the, to the uh, ground or dissipate? I see you've been doing your homework. That was, a, that was a settled question. I do appreciate that. Yes, they did a um, study, but uh, uh, look at it this way. Six feet is a minimum distance. If I have active COVID and I breathe, it goes six feet. And the, the bigger the particle, uh, it, it drops to the ground faster. But if I cough, it goes 20 feet. And if I right, sneeze, yes. it goes Force 30 behind feet. It. So six oh, feet God. is a minimum distance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Wow. Well, folks, yeah, it sounds like we are armed with, to be forewarned is to be forearmed, as my dad always says. And you know, um, you know, we're, we're warned about this, this, the, the, uh, the numbers were warned about, you know, the power of this uh, pandemic and the virus, and now it's up to us to mask up and do our part. Um, now, uh, that was kind of a prelude. So what about this vaccination? Uh, Mr. Williams, Tony, uh, you transitioned to that greatly. I, I see you've been doing this for a moment. So let me just set this up for you. We've already, and, and, and you and I have already set up just uh, everyone just 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 needs to know the models show that between now and April, the vaccine will only save about nine thousand lives. But socially distancing and wearing your mask can save up to a hundred thousand lives. Now let's talk about the um, vaccine. A, uh, so there are, there are, there are forty nine trials of vaccines going going on. All of them won't make it to that market, but we have two that are already approved: the AstraZeneca. Bio, BioNTech and the Moderna, um, sorry, the Pfizer BioNTech and the Moderna. The next one's coming is the AstraZeneca. And yes, now this is the question that everyone's gonna ask. Well, wasn't it developed kind of fast and didn't we even use new technology? Tony, can you just give me a minute? Let me, let me just develop this slowly. Can you just, can you just yes. give me a minute? Let me just yes. develop this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Roll it out. So, so rid yourself of this is technology that we de develop fast. Because why? The name of this virus is SARS-CoV-2. Don't forget, we saw SARS-CoV-1 in 2003. We started to develop this technology way back then. Way back then. So we had a 17-year head start. Now let's deal with this question about the vaccine being created fast. You are correct. It usually takes about 54 to 72 months. We did this in, in 10 to 12 months. Here's why. Usually the preclinical phase, a clinical phase, a manufacturing phase, and a distribution phase. And the us it's usually done in that order, preclinical, clinical, uh, uh, manufacturing, and the distribution. Most of the time it's been the manufacturing and the distribution. But because of all the money that was put in this, all the money, we were able to move to those parts faster because we did it in parallel. We did it all at the same time. The manufacturing and the distribution phase, which don't forget, we just talked about it. That's where most of the time it spent, it was being done at the same time. And there was one other reason why we were able to do this so fast time. Here's why. Across the world, people raise their hand to, vol to volunteer. Usually during the clinical phase, you gotta get vol volunteers, a certain number of them need to be in, in uh, fact, it, <clears throat> we have plenty of, of volunteers and there was enough disease in the community where we were able to get all the numbers that we needed. So yes, it was, it was done fast, but because of, of the money and because citizens across the world stepped up. Wow, wow. So research has been done. 
uh, time has been taken. It's just that we're we're looking from the other side of the lens. That's yes. what it sounds like to me. So, well, in your if you were to put a timeline on this, or or you know, just just from your perspective, do you do you see this um, clearing up or or going in a more positive direction by the summertime? Do you think that? What do you think? People are trying to plan. People are trying to look at, look and forecast. You have a lot of pregnancies going on right now. You know, people are in. You know, the numbers the num the numbers are doing what the numbers are doing. But there's also there's also procreation going on. There's also birthdays getting ready to come up. There's also celebrations. This, um, how can people plan or gauge? Do you think that anything is going to be have any good news on the horizon with regard to these numbers from your from your standpoint? The, the good news is that um, the vaccinations are here because that's how we're going to get out of this. And if yes. people want to plan, they should look at the number of vaccinations that are taking place. Currently, I think there are 18 million doses that are available, but they've only given out 5 million. There's 350 million people in this um, country. Um, my gut is, unfortunately, we will be in this spot for a moment. You know, we will be in this place for a, a moment, but let me tell your audience, I know people are getting tired, they're getting a little anxious and they're getting worried. That's not unusual. So everyone's feeling a little anxious and everyone's feeling a little tired. But, but I look at it this way. You you, you are an athlete, uh, uh, Tony. This is the fourth quarter of a football game. The fourth quarter you've made for those of you who got in COVID and you survived, congratulations. But for those of you who haven't, this is not the time to like, give up. We're in the fourth quarter. So continue to socially distance, wear your mask, uh, stay away from other people because you're almost there. And then we can be on the other side of this. Yes, yes. Fantastic news. Now, now I, have, um, I have another guest, but I want to be able to kind of, you know, reach back into our conversation when I push forward with her conversation. She's an educator. Uh, she's there, an, an educator in New Jersey. Uh, where the numbers are, you know, on rise just like they are everywhere, and we're dealing with um, a lot of numbers and a lot of uh, casualties. Um, so, I wanted to find out from you what what do you think in terms of schools being back in session and uh, being mandated? Do you think that it's better that the schools are online or not? Do you have uh, kids in school or uh, any friends with kids in school, and you know, what would be your take on on that? How do you feel about schools being back in session or being online? Uh, thank you for that question. So yes, I, I do have children who are in school. I even have a high school student. Who is, this is her high school year. Um, and I, I've got, so, so I was speaking to you as Dr. Joffrey previously. Um, but now I'm gonna speak to you as Dr. Joffrey, father, community member. I'm schizophrenic mm -hmm. about it. Here's why. I think it's safest, um, it's safest from a medical point of view to keep kids at home. Then that way they don't bring it home. I mean, and, and, then, and then that way they don't go to school and get infected and bring it home. However, you have, if you open up schools, you have teachers who have to go in and they can get infected. And many of them are like older, but from the really community ER point of view, the number of child abuse case reports are 94% down the case mm. reports, but the number, but the amount of child abuse is going up and the severity based on the ER literature is going up. Here's why. Most child abuse reports come from the school or something surrounding a school event. And the downside is, uh, 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 Tony, is that 80% of abused children live with the abusers. Someone, some adult needs to lay eyes on these children. So hence, I am in favor um, of, of them opening up schools just so that these children who are, who are in unfortunate situations have someone that they can connect to. Mm -hmm. So there's a, the mental the mental health aspect seems like it's 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 infiltrating what's what's going on, and we have to try to accommodate that by having the kids maybe yeah. go back and go back in school. That's here. Yeah, and mental health for everybody is absolutely key. And, and you know, uh, just to lighten it up, I'm I'm quarantined with two with like two teenagers, and. and <laughs> Can you imagine? And my daughter, she's 18, and so you know, I, I think all parents need some kind of mental health. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I had a special a specialist on uh, the right before the holiday, and I'll tell you, you know, it's it's really the numbers are up with mental health. A lot of uh, 
a lot of things are going on with, with those numbers as well. Um, I, I really do appreciate your perspective on all these topics, man. Um, you know, I think that um, if the people can have a takeaway from this, uh, oh, you know what, before I, even, before I even start landing the plane, I'd like to take one more opportunity to talk about um, what you're into, man, because you, you have another uh, a project that you've worked on. Uh, and you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, um, the split decision? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So um, what I also do, so I've got a, a bestseller book. It's called Train Your Mind for Split Second Decisions. I go around the country and the world and teach executives and teams how to make split second decisions. But as a result of COVID, I find myself um, teaching families because they become executives within their own homes. So and just real quick, we make about 35,000 decisions every day, 35,000. Most of them are mundane and don't even matter, um, such as what color uh, shoes to put on, what color tie, uh, what color skirt, or what kind of ice cream. Eat. But about one to 2% of those decisions are life-changing and life-altering. And most of those are split-second decisions. In other words, if we learn to improve our split-second decisions, we actually improve our decision IQ, and more importantly, we improve our lives. So that's what I do when I'm not in the, in, 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 in the ER uh, treating patients and, and, and doing my community activism. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, and it's and it, and you know what? Just hearing you explain that that backdrop of it, it kind it, it 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 sounds to me like it makes a lot of sense because anything that's going to to uh, increase your thought process or, or or make you better, okay, to make you better, is done through conditioning. And so, if you do these decision making uh, skills or you utilize them in a split second, it seems like it will develop your IQ because you'll be able to use that kind of uh, thought process a lot quicker so that sounds fantastic that sounds fantastic man well it sounds like you're into a whole lot sounds like that would be a good read as well i believe my wife purchased the book uh, wife online sure did. So, so i'm going to make sure that i get right to it now that i now that i see who i'm um, supporting right here <laughs> and you, you, hey man brad brother man i i certainly do appreciate you man and thanks for coming on the tommy williams show you know and taking the time out i think people have a a a, a, a superior glance now you know for anybody who is on the you know, not so the, the, the shady side of the mountain. I think we're, I think we're escalating. Uh, we've escalated and we've hit higher altitude so we can see the light. So I certainly do appreciate you taking time out and speaking with us this evening. And, um, and, and God bless. You. Yes. Mr. Tommy, I, I, I like to thank you what you do because uh, I see you blowing up. I see you helping the <laughs> community. So, so Tommy, I, I, I just really want to thank you because I see that you, you may not realize it, but but you're changing the world. You're you're playing your part, and I, I think it's Thank important you. to like change the world. Why? Because the world yes. needs to be changed, and it's the right thing to do. So I thank you, uh, Tommy, for what you do as well. Thank you very much, Jeffrey, and uh, everybody. Let's give a round of applause for Dr. Jeffrey for taking time out and giving us all this information. I certainly do appreciate you, and God bless you and your family, man. And we're we're going to take heed to your advice. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Welcome back, everybody. I have my next guest. You're on the Tommy Williams Show, and thank you so much for joining us. We just had Dr. Joffrey on, and he gave us quite a bit of information, quite a bit of information. We have some takeaways, um, and you all hopefully are enjoying the show. If you grabbed a snack, hopefully you're back and enjoying us. Um, we now, I, I actually asked uh, Joffrey, Dr. Joffrey, one poignant question, and that was the direction of education and his thoughts behind it. And I think that his response may bring, and I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm just overshooting myself, but it may bring about some sort of controversy or at least another side for us to take a look at. I have a teacher on with the public school system and uh, by the name of Coralie. Coralie is joining us at this time and Coralie, welcome to the show. Hey there, Tommy. Hey. So, I'm doing good. I'm hanging in there. So Coralie, uh, it's great to have you on the show. Why don't you give us a little background, talk, talk to us about um, who you are and what you do. Okay, well, Coralie Perry from New Jersey uh, in my seventh year of special ed science at the moment, uh, animal lover and rescuer. And that's about it. Super duper. 
Very nice. And animal lover in particular, you enjoy the company of? Actually, all animals. If I could have a lion or a cheetah right now, I would. Okay. But, so oh, cats. cats. Yeah. Cats, huh? Okay, super. And, you know, I can't help but segue this in because, you know, I have a lot of listeners out there and a lot of viewers out there who are Tommy Cats. And, um, and, and my YouTube channel, um, actually, at Tommy Williams Pink Tea, you can find me. Um, there's Tommy Cat. So I'm also a cat lover and a dog lover as well. Uh, so all animals, the likes. Um, but I, 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 what I don't like is this pandemic. And this pandemic has changed things so much, even for pets. So um, I wanted to talk to you. Um, so you're an educator. And um, what exactly, or, or and you're also, um, you're, you're in a community, you're living there. What do you see around your community? And then we'll delve into the, your profession. What do you see? What, what's changed during this pandemic? And when, and when did the change become evident? Well, I, I guess the change is, um, well, there are people out walking their animals more because people are home now because they're obviously doing a lot of virtual. Um, I don't see school buses anymore. Um, mm. Very few, far, uh, and in between. Um, Is that I because the schools are schools are closed at that at this point? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. They, okay. Uh, so, uh, Jersey, all Jersey public schools are are shut down for right now. Everybody's online. Not all. There are a few that are that are going, but right now, um, I'm one of the schools, and I was commuting, so now I just commute from my bed to my computer. But, yeah. um, you know, it's a, a lot of them are shut down and we actually really don't know what's going on at the moment. We were supposed to go back January 19th, but we haven't heard anything yet. So, yeah. 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 Jeez. Jeez. So um, what's your take on that? I mean, are you, are you comfortable? Was it, is, is it something that, you know, you just feel as though, this is a, this is a good time to just be home. It's like a vacay, you know. I mean, you know. Well, is it? Is it it's definitely not. It? It's definitely not a vacay because we actually are doing more work as a teacher right now at home than we would be in school. So I might yeah. have saved 15 hours in my commute, but I'm mm. also, you know, trying to grade as uh, many things that you now have virtually instead of when you have hands-on in the classroom where you can actually see the child doing something. It, it, yeah. it takes a, a little bit longer now to, to do things. Sure. How's I attendance know, with the students? Yes, I don't know if it's good or bad because it's a catch-22. So the students who had issues in school are now at home and doing okay. Now the oh, students- yeah didn't have issues in school are now having issues at home. So it's, it's, it's really hard to say. I miss the interaction with all of my students, but I don't miss yeah. them. <laughs> your, your, your car is thanking you, I'm sure. So, so listen, what about the, um, the attendance? I mean, because you can't teach unless you have somebody to teach. I mean, you can't, you know, so are the kids coming to school each day or is it, how, how are they doing on that? Well, the attendance is actually really good. Um, my one class so far, uh, they've already been all here, like 11 out of all of the days, but mm. we get the students that show up and are logged in, but they're actually not doing any work. They're okay. off whatever they're doing. They don't have their cameras on because of course it's not mandatory. Um, mm. so it's, they're there, but some of the work is not being done. And then of course, some of the kids are right on top of their work and it's all done. Yeah. So um, what grade level do you teach? Eighth grade, middle school science. Oh, okay. So these kids are pretty much self, um, they're self-directed, but um, you know, they're, they're preteens and they're, you know, kind of feeling themselves and they're feeling their independence. A lot, are a lot of the kids' parents at home or are they taking care of themselves online or? Uh, a lot of parents are at home, but some of them are, you know, by themselves doing, what they do um, yeah so we you know we reach out to the parents you know when things are you know going well in class um you know they've been pretty receptive um it, it's just rather difficult for the special ed kids that kind of need a little more but 
we also go off into, you know, what we have is our little chat rooms. So, you know, we take, you know, those children, you know, off, you know, we'll help them. Whoever needs help, you know, we have different rooms for them. So it, it's kind of good and it's just kind of bad all the way around. Yeah, yeah. So um, parents' uh, involvement and things, do the parents, um, you know, uh, with regard to homework, behaviors, you mentioned that sometimes the kids don't stay on the way they do. I would imagine that at a, a certain point, you know, things are reported, the parents kind of, you know, step in and kind of govern them to get back on uh, in, on, tack, on task? Some, sometimes they do, and, and sometimes it's a little frustrating because, you know, being that they're home with their children, there yeah. should be more of guidance for their children to get their schoolwork in, and that hasn't been the case. So, of course, as a teacher, it's a little upsetting knowing that a child is home with their parent and their work is not getting done. Yes. So it's, it's really, it's just a little upsetting from a teacher's standpoint right now. Sure, sure. And, and now, your public school, so I would imagine that there's um, state assessments and, and things of that nature. Now, last year, I know that, you know, most schools were out uh, for the for the majority of the last quarter of school, um, maybe even a little more than that. Um, so I don't know if uh, Jersey had their had their normal standardized state assessments, and what's no. planned for this this coming year. Yes, yeah, so we we didn't have the state assessment last year. Um, I haven't heard, but I think that we're probably not going to be having it this year. Also, mm. so uh, again, the state tests it's. That's kind of a rough one to call too from a, a teacher's point of view because yeah. you know, they're teaching throughout the year. So, yes. you know, they're taking a test in April. So, you know, all of a sudden we're gonna stop teaching in April. So, mm. you know, at the end we'll just do hands-on. So basically everything we need to teach is literally up through, you know, until April. So right. And, then, and anything know, and anything moving forward would just be kind of um, review for the assessment, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. And now you're trying to figure out if the assessment's going to come. And then, geez, I wonder, well, what what would happen with the with the students at that point if they're not being tested? That they I, I, they go on to the next years and and whatnot. But did they ever go back and take that test, or we're just kind of just in limbo trying to just see? It's since it's kind this is, of in limbo, and it's it, it's just you know again. You know, we're losing, per se, people are saying a year of education, but mm -hmm. again, if their students are at home and say the parents are on top of them to be doing their work, they really shouldn't be losing anything because now they're home in an atmosphere where they're comfortable to be able yeah. to do work. But then again, some people are saying now it's too lax being at home mm -hmm. for them to do their work. So yeah. again, catch 22. Sure, sure. Um, well, there's no uniforms or anything like that, but do the kids um, treat it like it's a school day? Do they, uh, do they come on in a kind of professional way or do they, are they in bed or are they, you know, at a desk? Well, Most of the uh, so here's the thing. So being that it's not mandatory for them to turn on their cameras, we only have a couple oh, of wow. that were appreciative when they have their cameras turned on. So, but for some, when we, you know, kind of said, and they've done it, They've been in their bed, you know, they've been in their pajamas, which of course being comfortable is one thing, but then sometimes it's not adequate for what needs to go on. Um, yes. But, you know, they, they are very, the only thing that is kind of awesome is those problematic students that we would have had in the classroom, the class yes. clowns, all of those. It's great because now they're on mute. So <laughs> when we do get some more work in, than we would mm -hmm. in the classroom when we have to stop and say, you know, Johnny, can you please stop doing that? Now yeah. they're just, they're listening, we're giving them work. Um, so it really, it's a whole catch 22 with teaching right now. Wow, wow, and I can imagine, I mean, cause I know that, you know, you have those individualized um, uh, educational plans and things like that, that are put in place for those kids. You mentioned the um, special, special ed kids and special needs. So I was wondering about the different accommodations. I know you mentioned they have a different room that you could kind of pull them and take them to, but you're still just one teacher. How do you, how do you, well, how actually, do you flow? 
Right. So for myself, I have myself and a co-teacher. Um, oh, good. And yes. And she's awesome. And we work together well. It's, it's really a co-taught class. So, mm -hmm. you know, she'll be doing, you know, some of the work creating things. I'll be doing some of the work creating things. Um, I mean, the students are, you know, with the IEPs, they, you know, they are getting what they need. I mean, especially it's, you know, a lot of the time it's extended time, you know, mo you know, modification. So they're getting yes. their extended time because we're already yeah. kind of extending time to begin with. So, <laughs> you know, making up work. And so they're getting what they need. It, it's just a struggle, especially, you know, when some of them really, the one-on-one -on -one is what, you know, they thrive better with, but that's why they now have the breakout rooms. So okay. we have help desk in the morning, what we call help desk. So mm -hmm. basically in the morning, um, all the teachers can go um, anywhere. Excuse my pups as they bark. Um, mm -hmm. The students can go to any teacher for any um, quote unquote extra help that they need. So if they had a problem, say the night before with work, they can go in the morning, come into the help desk and you know we can help them through what they need. So yeah. again, taking the initiative is always good for some. We have to send them an email and say, I think you need to come see us at the help desk in the morning. Yeah, yeah. So with regard to the help desk, now that that um, kind of makes me think about technology. So do you have any um, issues sometimes with technology, with the kids being online and things of that well, nature? It, yes, we do. And, and at times it truly is legit. As we all know, we've been kicked off of, of different things. But then we do have the students that will say, oh, I have Wi-Fi issues and then hmm. disappear. Like, They're I have digging a, outside of my house, fixing up yes. the cables. Right? We, we, oh, have a yeah. student, we have a student regularly at about 3 o'clock, 3 5, he all of a sudden has Wi-Fi issues and he's gone for the rest of the day. Wow, wow. So um, now, Wi-Fi issues. Is there a platform that you all have? Like, is it a, is it a platform or is it, you all just do you Zoom or no, how we, do you? We use Google Classroom. Oh, Google Classroom. Yeah. So, it, and, and so, well, I know that, you know, some districts, some districts have, and some states, they have, um, you know, some people, some teachers are in school, um, they might do, um, I think they have like my school online, I think it is, or, um, but, but you all, every, all the teachers, all the teachers are out of the we're facility, all, right? Everybody's all virtual. At, at, oh, okay. one point, at one point, if a teacher wanted to go in the school and teach from their classroom, like my one co-teacher, I have two co-teachers because we have an A day and a B day. So my one co-teacher, he would actually go into the school and he would teach from his classroom. But um, just before Christmas, they completely said, no one in the school, we're shutting that down too. And you mm -hmm. all, you know, completely are home virtual. Wow. Wow. So now, um, pulling away, pulling away from education and thank you very much for those, that information. Um, so all you teachers out there, you know, just kind of, uh, hear what's going on in this particular district in Jersey and, you know, kind of compare and contrast. I have a, um, I had a doctor on, Dr. Joffrey, and he had said, you know, uh, he feels that those schools should open because of the, pretty much the communication aspect. And also he was saying that the um, child abuse, child abuse was spiking up because the kids were at home more. Um, and, you know, he was saying the reporting, the reported child abuse cases was down, but the actual um, cases that were coming into the ER and coming into the hospital were spiking up. So we have um, Dr. Joffrey, whose perspective was send the kids back. Not so loose because he does have high school students, but he, he, he thought it out and his uh, gauge was determined by um, child abuse rates and also the social aspect. And he said he has two teenagers and he said that, you know, just going in and social distancing, wearing the mask and naturally with him being a doctor or being a concerned parent, um, ha make sure that his kids go through, follow through with the CDC guidelines. So what's your take? Do you think that the uh, school should reopen or? or well, I think the schools should reopen as long as it's safe. If it's mm -hmm. not safe, then I, I don't think we should reopen because who wants to create more 
of the issue that we already have. Sure. But, you know, they, they are trying to, of course, get, you know, the, the vaccine out, which as we see has been slow um, in rolling. Um, and, you know, they are, are trying to get uh, firefighters next. I think it's firefighters and policemen um, next because frontline workers, of course, you know, are first. So I think by the time that comes out, that's really not gonna be till probably about March, I think, for the teachers. Um, I feel that since we have been out uh, virtual since the beginning of the year, September, I personally think if we're not gonna get a vaccine and, and they wanted to have us come back, I, I personally don't think it would be feasible to only be coming back for two months and then going out for the summer again because we are now in the swing of things of being online and what students, you know, are expected to do, you know, in that aspect. So there have been some districts that opened and then shut down and then tried to go, you know, back. So it was kind of, you know, bad for the students in that aspect because they didn't have, you know, a steady way of, you know, doing their schoolwork. Yeah, do the kids have any, now Reese, I'm sorry. Should, should just stay out until June and go back in September. Got you, so so keep with the consistency, be be consistent um, with regard to the education Correct. for the school year. I sense we're so far in, that's your take. Correct, mm -hmm. consistency I feel is the best. Mm -hmm. So do the kids have, um, what kind of resources do the kids have for, for the school year? Do they have online books or do they have actual physical books they use and they have at home? Uh, well, they have, they have online books. We've actually had already, you know, had that from before. So they have online books. And then, mm -hmm. of course, they have their Chromebooks. Every student has a Chromebook. And if there was an issue, they were able to go and get their Chromebook um, fixed, uh, exchanged out, whatever they needed. They would just fill out, you know, um, a ticket, uh, and they would get their they would get their Chromebook uh, fixed or exchanged. Fantastic. And Wi-Fi. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now um, I know that I know that like different communities have different approaches to like the um, the meal programs and things like that. Do they do a meal program? Do you know if uh, for the students? Yes. Well, um, yes. We they've had um, our you know lunch workers. Uh, they would have the, the lunches and there would be a pickup that they were would, were able to come and get the food that they need. That's needed. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's super. That's super. No aftercare. No, no aftercare. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, 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 it's, it's rough for parents right now. Yeah. It's rough. It's rough all the way around. Yeah. So what's happening in your community? Like, um, you know, you're dwelling where you live and stuff. Is it, are people CDC and following guidelines or a lot of places closed or open? What's happening with businesses? For, for the most part, you know, people are following the guidelines. You know, they're wearing their masks. They're trying to keep six feet. You know, and then you have some of the, the, the people that are a little, you know, a little too crazy with their, their distancing, you know, the way that they are. But, um, you know, a, a lot of the takeout, you know, business, you know, of course, been doing well you know some of the the local bars and restaurants are really not doing well um mary lou halverson which i went to school with you know she runs the new jersey you know restaurant you know association here and you know it, it, it's been a really tough struggle for for businesses and and stuff here yeah. went through the summertime with the jersey shore i'm sure there was a lot of hits a lot of places that just didn't that naturally didn't thrive, but might not have even made the cut, you know? Correct. Of, and they're, they're not gonna see anything they said until, you know, they, they start doing the taxes right now. Now that yeah. the year's over, the businesses, you know, they'll start doing their taxes and they'll find out how much loss they've really mm. had. Well, hopefully the fishermen did well. Well, let's hope somebody's doing well because- Somebody's doing well, right? Is Klein still open down there? Um, as, as far as I know, yes, but who did close? Um, Clancy closed in Neptune, wow. mm. which is the sister's company of Kelly's. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, well, you know, it's nice to know that you're still smiling. 
and yes, um, you know, you, you, you know, you're, you're, you're pushing forward. You know, we have to, we have to be survivors. I mean, right now it's like, you know, we just have to dig in and we have to realize that every day counts, you know, and yes. um, to try to stay optimistic and follow the guidelines, let the people who are professionals take the helm. And meanwhile, we just have several seats and kind of, you know, wait it out. You know, um, I, I do certainly appreciate you coming on. I think there's a lot of people that can um, that can understand and identify with all that you're speaking of. I mean, you know, parents, you know, and teachers alike. Um, I certainly appreciate you coming on the show. And uh, thank you so much for coming on. It's great seeing you, by the way. Yes. I like the change. I like, I like, like the, Oh, you, you like know, the purple, nice. you know me. Yeah, I like it. So, you know, and you know what, you're, you're, you always stay in with the kids, like, you know, the cool teacher, you know, and, yes, and you're that person, nice. you know, you're fantastic at what you've been doing. And I can't believe 17 years already, huh? Yeah, 17 years. You look great. I who would you thought. Look great. God bless you. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on and appreciate you. You take care of yourself and God bless. See you later. Well, thank you very much for joining us this, today on the Tommy Williams Show. We had two amazing guests. Again, we had Dr. Joffrey. He came on. He's actually a surgeon and gave a lot of information on COVID, a lot of facts, a lot of statistics, and still gave it in a friendly and understandable way. So hopefully you found his information to be very, um, very good and uh, a learning experience. I know I did. And then we also had Cora Lee come on. Cora Lee is an educator in New Jersey. She gave us uh, the rundown on what's taking place in at in her district, uh, at her school, and and her at her district within the public school system there in Jersey. And uh, their school is shut down. They are home. Everybody is home, online. Teachers and students the likes. So you know, it, it, although you might say, "Ooh, that's fantastic," and you know, the only thing that really uh, seems like it's it's uh, improving, probably so, is the pollution, because a lot of people, a lot less cars are on the road these days. And you know, I, 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 that would be a great question. Maybe we could have somebody come on um, with regard to the uh, energy and environmentalist. Um, who could talk about the pollution these days. I mean, everybody, everything is being affected by this pandemic. Um, so much to learn, so much to identify with. Um, we can't leave any stone unturned, and on this platform, we surely won't. So um, we're going to keep our brains moving and try to give you all the information we can. And thank you so much for joining me today um, on the Tommy Williams Show. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Take care, God bless, and stay masked up. Also, I want to let you know, folks, um, that you could find uh, me also on train with, uh, I'm sorry, Tommy Williams, the Tommy Williams, Tommy Williams YouTube channel. It's a pink tea. It's a pink tea, Tommy Williams YouTube channel. We have a super fantastic treat for you all at the end of the month. And that is going to be a watch party. Um, as you know, I have a sister, um, or maybe you don't know, I have a sister. Her name is Wendy Williams of the Wendy Williams Show. Uh, national, uh, nationally talk show, national talk show host Wendy Williams, and um, she has her docudrama and also documentary uh, coming up based on her life um, at the end of the month, January 30th. So I'm doing a watch party, and it'll be fantastic. You can come on over, pull up a snack, and we could all watch this together. Um, you know, mental health is something that's really, really, uh, at, it's really being sacrificed during this pandemic. And um, everybody is being affected. I'm being affected. You know, mental health. You know, you get tired of staying in. You get tired of wearing the mask. You forget the mask, got to go back to the car. That could be monotonous. All right, everything. Being at home, I'm married 22 years. You know, I mean, to be home all the time, to be restricted on how we can, can, can function and move about. There's a lot of people retiring. I had a guest on several episodes ago who was a um, sanitation worker. And, you know, he uh, got out of the business. It was time, but it wasn't really that time that he really expected to um, retire, but he did. He made that decision for his family. He said, you know what, I'm not going to sacrifice the health and wellness of my family, so I have to make a choice. Everybody's being affected. Um, I just want you folks to just keep in mind that mental health is real. We had a specialist on last week. Um, and uh, I want you to remember the takeaway that Dr. Christine had um, given us, uh, Dr. Ferrari. And she had told us that, you know what? 
um, if you stick with the norm, you know, stick with some things that you've always done, those habits. If you used to always take the trash out at a certain time or walk the dog at a certain time or speak to your, um, speak to your parents or make that call to a sibling um, or, or if you do a family reunion on Zoom, then do that family time. Take that time out. Stay in the pocket of what you generally do. Don't pull away because those normal type of tendencies are, is what's going to hold you through during this pandemic. And hopefully we get out of this, this soon enough. Um, thank you for joining the show. Take care. Stay masked up. Tommy Williams Show, everybody. See you next week. Now, glutathione is a big word, but it's the body's own master antioxidant. Oh, it's a scavenger for free radicals, for bacteria, and what's relevant now, viruses. This is new to the marketplace. There's no other product on the market that has the ingredient NASET. And basically NASET increases the production of that glutathione that is in our body already to strengthen and, and enhance our, our immune system and keep it strong. Elevated sense of well-being. Supports muscle strength and endurance. Cognitive function. Powerful liver support. energy, helps blood sugar regulation, superior bioavailability of key ingredients. One of your best defenses against COVID mm -hmm. is a strong immune system. Taking GSH Plus as a daily supplement does all that. Now we have the product out on the marketplace.